Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make uh, some very nice trees uh, using the materials you see here. Uh, the most important part is the uh, crafter's uh, um, pick glue. This is called the ultimate. It's a water-based glue that dries completely clear. It's uh, quite thick and uh, has many many uses besides the one I'm going to show you today. I also have some um, CNA glue, the super glue, and uh, various tools for holding things and uh, paints and I will go over each individually uh, as we use them. Uh, the trees you see here that I've been working on are, are for a uh, diorama I'm building of a wintertime scene and so of course there'll be no foliage on them and because there's no foliage uh, we won't have anything covering uh, the fact that we don't have a whole lot of branches in our trees. These trees are for an end scale diorama and uh, they're 25 to 35, 25 to 30 feet tall and uh, uh, that uh, entails the use of a uh, uh, special wire uh, that has uh, that it's not too big or too thick. Uh, I'm using a 20 gauge wire but it has 19 strands of copper in it and uh, let me show you that. Okay uh, before I show you the wire I want to show you these plugs that uh, uh, I use to uh, separate my control panel from my layout and uh, the, the re, the, you can see that I spliced a bunch of wires onto these uh, plugs. Well, the plugs I brought from Amazon.com and uh, the, uh, uh, I didn't use their wiring. There was one female side and one male side and uh, I cut out their wire and uh, used uh, the wires that I had uh, uh, leading from my uh, layout and from my control panel uh, to make them go together. Uh, as you can see, after cutting off all that wire, I have a lot left. You'll also note that it's very, very flexible. And uh, when you're selecting your wire, the more flexible it is, the more strands of wire are inside. And this particular wire has 20 strands. Um, now, I've cut a piece of wire. Do I select that? Let's see, the three inch wire? Yes, and I have two pieces. I'm going to put them together and that makes 40 strands. So we can uh, have uh, lots of branches to show. So let's get started. All right, I have uh, two pieces of wire, three inches long, and I'm going to strip about an inch, maybe a little less than an inch from the bottom or either end this will be the bottom because that's where I'm stripping it and the other one approximately the same it doesn't have to be exact um, be careful when you're putting it in because this wire is fine you can lose wire and uh, although that's not a major catastrophe uh, you'd be better off if you didn't. Now to start I'm going to put a small twist in here and then I'm going to insert a pin. Uh, let me cut the top off of this. Um, my diorama is going to have a foam base so I need something to uh, stick into the foam to hold the tree. Uh, if you're uh, if you have a uh, wood base, it doesn't need to be this long. You can use a shorter one, but you'll have to have something. Uh, you'll need. Uh, uh, I know on uh, my layout has a wood base, and I would have a pin at least this long. Then I would drill a hole in the three eighths plywood, uh, put some glue on the base of the tree, and then slide the pin in it to hold it erect. Uh, this one, I'm just going to stick this in right here, like this, and then I twist it around like that. Okay, now with these two pieces of wire together I'm going to end up with a trunk in end gauge of approximately 12 inches in diameter. And of course that would be 24 inches if you were going to use this on an HO layout. But uh, down at the base here I'm going to turn up just a few 
I'm turn up some of the turn up the ends of the wire, get them on both sides of the pin, and when I'm done, these will be roots. Okay. Uh, if you don't want roots, if the tree you're going to make is like an aspen or a poplar or something that doesn't have big roots at the base, uh, well then you needn't do this. But uh, I'll do that. Uh, and let's even them up a little bit. They don't need to stick out too far. Uh, as you can see, the wire is very thin and fine, and just regular scissors cut it without damaging the scissors in the least little bit. So once I get that in, to make sure it doesn't unwrap, and to make sure the pin stays placed, I'll use a little CA glue. There to hold it in, and here to make sure it doesn't unravel. You can put it all the way up if you want to, but it's not really necessary. Once you, uh, all the rest of it will be twisted, and this will hold this end. Okay, now. I will set this in here and wait for it to dry and get back to you. All right, our CA glue is dried, so we'll take the, let me get the right glasses here. Now, and be careful when you cut. This wire is so fine, you don't want to lose any of the uh, strands if you can avoid it. And my grip isn't what it used to be, so I'll hang on with these. And then that one should just pull off easily. Okay. And get it right centered in the 20 gauge knot. Pull that off. Okay. Now we should have our 40 strands. And at this point, we decide what kind of tree we're going to make and how we're going to make it. Now, uh, I've been making cottonwoods, so I will continue making cottonwoods because I need some more. So, for that, what I'm going to do is pull off four strands right here, like that and I'm going to twist them together like this. Now, the farther out you take this twist from the base, the wider your tree will be. But for right now we don't have to, we can decide on that later. Just take it out a little less than an inch. Then I'll go to the other side because that twist is a little higher over there and I'll take out four more. But I'm going to continue to do four strands at a time that looks like five. Well, let's let's, let's take five because uh, we'll, we'll we'll do a couple of odd numbers in there. And again, I'll twist them the same way. I always uh, to to make sure they're twisted the same way. Uh, I always hold the strands in my left hand and then twirl the other side towards me or twist my left hand away from me. Uh, that way, later on, if sh I should need to untwist anything, I know which way to go without looking because these strands are so small, it's pretty hard to see. As we go up, we'll pull these down out of our way. And I'll take another little twist in here. You see, just a half twist. And then we'll pull out four more. One, two, three, four. Use the tweezers if your fingers aren't working too well. Also, when you're, when you're twisting four, split them in a V like that and then grab them. If you're twisting two, same thing. If you're twisting five, three and one, two and the other. Six, three and one, three and the other. You'll get a better twist that way. And if you have them all laying next to each other, you might end up having just one wire twisted around the other three uh, if you try it the other way. So, we'll twist that, then go to the other side of the main twist and pull out four more. One, two, three, four, and again, split them just a little bit, and twist the same way you twisted all the others. And I will continue to run up the trunk. And I'll put a little twist in it, and then I'll pull 
out from the side and continue twisting, I'm going to run this all the way up to the top. When I get to the end, if I have all 20 strands of wire, since I have five down here, I'll have one three up there. Uh, but I will continue to that to do that and get back to you. Uh, all right, I have all the uh, main branches uh, uh, twisted now, and so I have left some fives. I have two fives and two threes, and everything else is four. Uh, I wanted to explain just a little more uh, about uh, uh, how you decide how you're going to twist and how you make your trees different from one another. Um, and this one, uh, I t when I'm twisting the main branches near the base of the trunk, I twist them out a little bit longer than I do at the top. Gradually as you go up to the top, you uh, twist a little less. Uh, also, when you make that uh, first deviation from the trunk, as uh, you saw uh, uh, earlier, uh, I started out by just pulling out four strands of wire. But one of the things that you can do is like this tree here where you can divide them 20 on one side and 20 on the other and twist together and to make two, uh, to make a split in the main trunk, one split, and then start separating them in fours. Uh, and here's one that's done with uh, three. Divide them into uh, three close to equal portions, twist them into a solid trunk, and then start dividing them into four, threes and fours. So uh, that is a decision uh, that you have to make on your own depending upon what you uh, want to do uh, and uh, uh, the kind of tree you're trying to make. All right, now I have the uh, main branches done. I work them from the bottom up. We do the smaller branches, secondary branches, we'll do those from the top down. So I'll fold these down a little bit out of my way. And as you can see up in the top, I've got four here and three here, because remember I had a five down here. So uh, the first thing I'll do is I'll take this three and I'll just leave this one alone and twine the uh, two together. And again, twist everything the same way. Uh. And remember, up at top, we don't need to have them as long. Branches aren't as long because these are the newer branches. And then I'll just go ahead and cut this off right here. It seems a little wasteful, but then again, the wire is not that expensive. I'll just cut this one here. And that's how you do an odd one. Over here we have two twos, so we'll split them out in the V's to make sure we're not just wrapping one around the other, but wrapping the two together. And this one. Keep that one just a little shorter than the one it's next to, and then cut off the excess. Make one longer than the other and continue to work down. Whenever you have four, you split them into twos. If you have five, you've got a three and a two. And you do that three like the three I did on top. But just continue down the tree, always keeping your twists the same way so that if for some reason you need to untwist it, you'll know which way to go. Uh, these wires are very fine, but they're strong enough to do this. I haven't had any of them break while I was twisting. Not one. So, uh, be careful. But the wire should be strong enough. And of course, after we coat it, which is the next step, they'll be even stronger. 
So we'll do that and cut these off. So I will continue going down the tree trunk and doing the secondaries and uh, I will rejoin you when I finish that. All right, I finished twisting uh, all of the branches out to where I have two forks at the end, except for those two branches that have one that have just a single piece coming out because I miscounted. Um, for right now, uh, we, we can mold the uh, uh, branches later, but for right now I want all of the forks spread out horizontal to the ground for the next step. What we're going to do now is we're going to uh, coat the wire with uh, Crafter's Pick uh, Ultimate Glue. Uh, this will do two things. It will uh, hide the twists of the, um, of, the, of the wire and it will also provide a much better surface for painting. Uh, and added to that, it will also uh, strengthen the wire and make them less likely to break. So uh, let's begin because we have to do uh, both sides of the branches and those bottom branches are very close to the ground. We'll start off by uh, painting in my, uh, uh, by holding it in one hand and uh, uh, painting the glue on with another. All right, I uh, keep the crafter's pick glue upside down all the time. This, this uh, bottle is almost empty, so uh, if, if I turn it up, it takes forever for this really thick glue to get down. So I keep it turned up like this, and I'm going to squeeze some glue into this glass container. Now I'm probably not going to... The glue is thick and will uh, eventually, before I get finished coating this, it's going to uh, be dry to the point where it's so thick that I can't use it. Uh, I'm going to keep with me uh, a little uh, container of uh, water and uh, the same brush that I'm going to use to paint with I also use to paint on the glue. Uh, just get it just a little bit wet like this. Let me pick this up and hold it in this hand and I will dip it in the glue like this and paint the bottom. Uh, we're not looking for a completely even uh, coat because we're just looking to cover the wire. All right. So I'll start on the bottom. Uh, as you can see, the glue goes on white, but it dries completely clear. And as a matter of fact, if I want to put icicles on these, I can kind of touch it here and pull it away, and let any little spikes it leaves will dry clear and look like icicles. But I'll save that for the final touches on my diorama when I do that. For right now, I just want to, I'm going to cover the undersides of a branch. then go up top and cover the other side. Do both the trunk and the branches. Um, if you get a little too thick in some place, just come back and run your brush through it and it'll thin out. Uh, if you run your brush through it and it doesn't thin out, then you should probably clean the glue out of your brush and put some more glue down because the glue has gotten too thick to use. Okay. Uh, the Crafter's Pick glue is not real expensive. It's uh, six dollars uh, at uh, Hobby Lobby but with your 40 percent off coupon it's only three dollars and sixty cents and that's for 16 ounces and uh, it goes a long way. As a matter of fact I'm considering using it instead of uh, realistic water for the pond that I'm going to have in, in this uh, in my diorama. Uh, I'm going to see how that works because really it dries crystal crystal clear. Also I noticed the first time I used this to coat the wire it sort of looked like that thing you get in Colorado sometimes where you have a freezing rain 
and the branches of a tree are completely covered in ice all the way around. <laughs> and so, uh, of course, uh, I painted over that uh, for the bark color. But uh, uh, I'm considering doing that in my diorama on every tree. Just uh, once, once I've colored the bark, I'll go back and coat it with this again, and I'll see how that looks. And uh, if I deem that it's worthy of your attention, I'll do a clinic on that. But for right now, I'm just coating all of the branches all the way on both sides with the glue. And then I'll set it aside to dry. And when the glue's dry, you're going to see the whites turn completely clear. And uh, then we will paint it. Uh, all right, as you can see, the uh, crafter's pick has dried completely clear. You can see all of the uh, uh, copper wire underneath. And now we're going to paint. And I've got uh, two colors here. This is a color I made. Uh, it has started out as uh, Model Master's light gray. And I mixed in some of this Model Master's, uh, uh, what is this, uh, U.S. Army Hilo Drab. It's a very dark olive drab. I mix some of this in there to make a dirty gray, and we'll use this for highlighting. So, we'll open that. And uh, the same way we painted on the glue, we'll paint the paint. Starting at the bottom. Again, leaving all of those branches uh, horizontal to the ground so that there's, we can get the uh, paintbrush in between them. And paint the bottoms. And then when we have the bottoms painted, flip it over and paint the top. to cover all of this metal. So after you've, after you've finished painting, one, uh, painting it, you'll need to go back and have a look at it to make sure you don't see any of that copper uh, metal. Uh, because you, I don't think I've ever seen a copper colored tree. So I will finish painting this and get right back to you. All right, our uh, tree is all dry with the uh, base gray paint. Uh, by the way, the colors you choose to paint your bark is entirely up to you. These are the colors that I chose for my cottonwoods. Uh, next, I'm going to highlight it or low light it with a darker color. Uh, and this is the, uh, uh, the same uh, U.S. Army Hilo drab that I mixed into the gray paint over there. And we're going to do what's called dry brushing, which means, you know, I, I don't want to change the color. I still want it to be gray. I just want some highlights. So I'll dip it in here into the paint that stuck on the top, and I'll wipe it off here, and then run it down. Let's wipe it a little more. Let's keep it nice and dry. Okay, just like that. And if, and uh, by the way, I, I believe I told you that uh, you're going to miss spots on the gray paint. And when you see some copper, I say a little bit there, you probably can't see it, but I can. I'll just put some full paint on it and cover it up. And that spot will just be darker. Yep, I see another spot there, so I'll just cover that and then wipe it off and go and do the rest. Wipe them on both sides, just take the brush and put it on. 
we're only highlighting now. Okay? We're just highlighting. Oh, and there's some more copper. We'll take that out. And that's all there is to the painting. Now I'm going to set this down. I have a, another tree that I was working on almost the same. It's dry. This one right here. And it's dry at this point. We can start forming the tree. It doesn't need to be horizontal anymore. Take these and start pointing them up. The inside branches can be twisted any way you want. Any way it looks good to you. And there we have our tree and it will be ready. It is ready for uh, foliage. So let's stick this in here. Now, uh, as I said, I was doing a, a winter diorama and I don't need any uh, foliage on mine. But if you're not doing winter, I've got some a very old bag of Woodland Scenics foliage here. And uh, I'll take out some foliage. And tear out a piece. Tear a smaller piece than you're going to use because we're going to stretch it out. See? And then it will be bigger. Robocall. <laughs> but what are you going to do? Politicians, they get to do it if they want to. That's why they don't help us get rid of them. Okay, you can see how the foliage fits on like that. Covers up and you can still see through the foliage. To see all that work you put in on those branches. And you've got a nice little tree. So, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and good luck on making your trees.